Welcome to Royal Oak Middle School, even though it hasn't always been called by that name. This beautiful historic building has gone through many changes during its 82 years of life. Originally built in 1927, it was first called Royal Oak High. In 1955, it was renamed Don Darrow High School. And just two years ago, in 2007, it became Royal Oak Middle School. Although the name has changed, over the years, there's one thing about this building that hasn't. It's the character. And nothing speaks about character more than art and architecture. This building has both. From the panoramic views of Washington Avenue from the bay windows of the upstairs classrooms, to the grapes carved in limestone that hang over the front entrance, to the WPA Depression Era oil canvases that hang in the auditorium, to the multi-themed iridescent glaze of the Puabic tiles found in the hallways. This building is filled with great art and architecture. Today we're going to continue this long and rich tradition of beautiful art here in Royal Oak. With the help and guidance of professional artists Rick and Deb Zuccarini, the students here at Royal Oak Middle School will create a one-of-a-kind original fresco. Fresco is Latin for fresh. Fresco art is painting with pure pigments and wet limestone plaster. When the plaster cures, a thin layer of crystals form, which seals in the color forever. The theme of this fresco project is the essence of Rams. The reasons for making this fresco are many. First, we wanted to add to the rich tradition of art that has evolved here in Royal Oak. Next, because this is only our second year as a middle school, we wanted to create an identity of our own in this building. And lastly, but perhaps more importantly, we wanted the students to have a greater sense of ownership in their school. After the students were finished creating the fresco, then they would have a much greater sense of pride for the appearance of their school building. Under the supervision of the Zuccarinis, the project began with the students building the frame. They nailed two by fours to a four by eight foot piece of half inch plywood and fastened it to the wall by using a hammer drill. Look at those bolts. This baby is up there for good. An expanded metal lath is attached to the plywood. There are two sides to the metal lath. It's important to put the correct side up. One side is beveled with diamond shaped cups for the plaster to settle into and grab hold of. Now for the mixing of the limestone plaster. We are using aged lime putty, sand, and water. Here you see the students working the plaster into the consistency needed for the fresco. The first coat of plaster goes on. A second coat of plaster will be applied in a couple of days. Using two different sizes of trowel, the plaster is applied in a bottom to top motion and worked in all directions in order to ensure good adhesion to the lath. In the meantime, other students are grinding pigment. Fresco is painting with pure pigment and wet limestone plaster. The pure pigments come from the earth. There are only four colors we use. All other colors are derived from the four, which are red iron oxide, yellow okra, cobalt blue, and viridian green. Water is used to grind the pigment into a state of suspension. Grinding pigment will have to occur continuously so that we have enough color to paint with. Before the first coat dries, it is severely scratched to create a tooth or key for the next coat of plaster to grab onto. It isn't enough just to be functional. It should also be pretty to look at. We are fortunate to have the Zuccarinis leading our project. Rick and Deb have many years of experience working with and creating fresco. They originally learned the craft from Stephen Dimitrovs and his wife, Lucien Blotch. The Dimitrovs worked with Diego Rivera on the fresco at the Detroit Institute of Arts in 1932. In 1987, the Zuccarinis worked with Steve and Lucy, assisting in cleaning those same famous murals at the DIA. Rick and Deb have been helping Royal Oak students create fresco since 1993 with small jar lid projects in the classroom. 
and a similar four by eight foot fresco that hangs in the cafeteria at the former Adams Junior High School. Over 250 drawings were submitted by the students at Royal Oak Middle School. Their ideas were far ranging. Some showed knowledge of the past, others concepts of today, and still some were dreams of the future. They focused on academics, athletics, or the social aspects of school. The students were encouraged to look at some of the fresco masterpieces from the Renaissance to get a feel of how the design should flow. Eventually, all the students' ideas will be combined into one composite drawing, capturing the essence of Rahms. Now for the second coat of plaster. It's important in applying the second coat to first wet the surface of the previous coat. The plaster is applied once again in a bottom to top motion and worked in all directions. A wood float is then applied in a circular motion. This levels the surface and also creates a tooth. Then the plaster is left to dry. The next step is transferring the design onto the second coat of plaster. This is done by dividing the design into one foot grids, much as you do in math using X and Y coordinates. Each one foot square is transferred one by one using charcoal to sketch the rough outline of the picture. Charcoal is used because it is easily blown away to allow for corrections. Once corrections are made, a diluted mixture of pigment is used to keep the desired image in place. Because we can only work on fresh, damp plaster, we need to divide the large picture into smaller sections. Transferring the drawing onto the plaster gives us a day-to-day -day guide. 